All right, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, back in Future Fitness for a, a chess session. It'll be a solo one today. Uh, Chris is doing something work-wise, um, but that doesn't really change anything. Apart from obviously some force reps and and that. But other than that, um, so we haven't filmed the new high volume chess session. So with this one, we've got your like your clusters and that coming back in, much like the the leg session we uploaded previously. Um, so yeah, these principles have been carried on, We're keeping the volume nice and high. Um, I actually noticed a week ago that I've managed to kind of lean out and recomp a wee bit, purely from having that training increase, that volume increase. So I was pretty chuffed for that. Um, so the longer you can keep your food up in a contest prep, the better. You obviously, from the get go, you don't want to strip food back too drastically to make changes, you want to just try to keep everything, as I say to clients, like rinse a current setup for as much progress as you possibly can. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna see how far we can get not touching the food and keeping the training output super high. So um, with today's session, we're gonna do five, five chest exercises and then we're gonna add in some side delts as well. So um, doing a little bit of side delts on a chest day, a little bit of side delts on a, on a shoulder day as well. So I'm trying to incorporate a wee bit of frequency with with uh, side delt work. Um, so far so good, I've noticed changes already. The, the shoulder session itself is very rear delt dominant. So kind of getting the best of both worlds. I'm kind of getting that frequency aspect with the side delts and I'm getting that kind of big, massive kind of pump in the, in the delt session. So that's kind of how I'm splitting things up on that front. Um, so we're 14 weeks and five days, four days out from the Arnold USA. So uh, it feels like two seconds ago we were filming ones for the last show, but uh, yeah, everything's running smooth. Like I said, leaned up a wee bit last week um, and I feel just rounder, fuller, stronger. Everything seems to be firing just now, so really chuffed. Um, maybe you hear my voice, I've got a little bit of a cold, but um, it's not really stopping me. I thought I was going to have a migraine today because I, I get usually I get migraines once a year, and uh, for a variety of different reasons. And I know what it feels like as I'm going into one. So luckily, woke up this morning without one. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything's kind of going well. Um, no issues with the hip. No issues with the bicep. Touch wood. So the body seems to be holding up relatively well. And uh, yeah, ready to crack on and see what we can do in this, in this session. So hopefully it's going to be a good one and uh, yeah, stay tuned with us. Let's go. Start with incline the barbell press. Um, those who have been following me on Instagram, uh, they'll know that it's kind of relatively new movement for me. I haven't really done it ever consistently. Um, I don't know what that was. I think it was just out of maybe we have ego because I saw guys who were like lifting like four plates, and I couldn't believe that I wasn't benching four plates. So, um, but I put it in. I've already seen a difference in my upper chest. There's definitely been noticeable growth there so uh, yeah start with that um, got one four five uh, for seven reps last, last week so we're gonna try to beat that today um, the setup we've got here is uh, one working set six to ten reps or six to twelve reps um, and then we're gonna do a cluster set for the second set so four sets of four with 15 second rest very similar to the setups we've done in the past um, so yeah, it's gonna be a big one. We've obviously we filmed incline dumbbell press before uh, when I done the 80s for six reps uh, quite a while ago now. Uh, that's probably about a year ago. Um, it just shows you, although the, we're still working the same muscle, the difference in in strength levels. So with a bar where your your fixed, your hand position is fixed, your shoulder. Uh, the line in which the shoulder drives is fixed. 
um, that can impact to the strength levels. That differs from person to person for myself. Having using a dumbbell and having the ability to kind of rotate the shoulder joint allows me to move more weight. Uh, where a bar, it doesn't. So um, not considerably weaker, but just say 80 in both hands is 160. I'm only moving 140 here for a bar, so it kind of gives you some perspective as to how so a movement that's incredibly similar can differ massively in terms of the hand positioning, the equipment you're using if it's a bar or a dumbbell. So, um, yeah, I thought it was quite a good insight into, into that. So, so following the 6 4 1 uh, warm up method. So, um, I'll do this for a 1. If I was to feel that that was too too light or that I would exceed the rep range which I was working with in the working set, then I know that I need to increase it. Uh, but I'll do one rep with this. This will probably be the working weight because that's what I've done last week. One rep with this and then that will kind of engage my mind um, into the fact that I'm going to use this working weight. It's going to get the shoulders ready, it's going to get the chest ready. Um, so simply doing one rep just gets everything quote unquote primed, if that makes sense, everything ready for the set. Um, so it's like, mentally, if you've already done it for one, you know you're going to get a set with it, rather than going into your working set wary or not sure whether you're going to actually lift the weight. Um, it's just a, an all round good approach, both mentally and physically, of how to kind of warm up for big compound lifts. So. I don't think I'll ever stray away from that method. Times when I'm allowed to shout at her. <laughs> <laughs> so I cluster sent her. Uh, yeah, like I said, four sets of four. This is the second match, so. I would have, if Chris was here, I would have increased it. But we're still getting what we need out of the exercise without a spot, so I'm going to keep it at 110. Uh, that's what I did last week. Um, Give myself a good rest as well for this. As you can see, like, I'm out of breath most of the time anyway, but as you can see, I'm quite out of breath, so I don't want to jump into something like a cluster set having not recovered. So don't be afraid to take X, like, X amount of time or enough time when you feel fully rested. You know, we're not trying to, we're trying to do the 100 meters here. We're trying to ensure that every set is efficient and, uh, and as progressive as possible. So, no, I'm not going to take the piss. We'll do like 10 minutes between sets. But um, as long as it's enough to make sure that I'm still, my heart rate's still somewhat elevated, but not so much that I'm gassed before I even go to the set. So. Really, I 
We're going to do one working set, 6 to 12, and then we're going to do a set where a back off set, but with the back off set, we're going to try and achieve double the reps that we achieved in the first set. So, if I get well, 6 last week, so we're going to drop the weight and uh, in that scenario, I had to get obviously 12. So, it's, uh, it's a very simple way of just kind of Put in an intensifier without something that's all too overly complicated. Um, I mean, some intensifiers involve like four different stages, so this one's just kind of nice to kind of get it done and get out of it, essentially. So, so this kind of way, get a spotter to. I don't like being handed the weight when you're some, when you're lying back. Because you're loading one side and then the other, it's just that just screams injury to me. So I'd rather test my own strength by being able to kick them up. And um, that to me is a true indication as to where your strength actually is. Um, so yeah, but deadlifting them from the floor obviously takes up a huge amount of energy as well. So if you can lift one and get your spar to lift the other, then uh, that's going to help you kind of reserve energy for the set. So. Last week, I got six with them, um, and I've spoken about how weight and reps shouldn't be the only indicator of progress, because yeah, I got the same weight for the same reps, but that felt way more comfortable than last week, it felt way more stable, I actually felt the chest doing a wee bit more there, so take a note of that, a mental note of that, and that's progress in and of itself, so I put up a post yesterday about being too hung up with weight and reps. Granted, it's important, we should always be striving for more to get stronger, but take as much away from the set as you possibly can. So that includes, for, for instance there, way more stable. So that to me is, uh, is progress. So, so I'm gonna go for double reps, because that didn't increase. Um, I'm gonna keep it at 50 kilos. I got 12 last week, so the goal is double reps, that's kind of the minimum target, so I'm going to try and get 12 plus. We're gonna do incline uh, seated press. What's that? 
one working set and then a second working set, probably back it off a wee bit, just take a wee percentage off and then we're going to drop it and do uh, five second negatives, three second positives. You see, nothing really new here but it's a good method, I find it's really effective for chest just to emphasise those negatives and whatnot. So like I said, I don't want to really do this with a bar or dumbbells, now that we're confined to machines, and machines sorry, it's far easier to use these intensifiers where you're monitoring the tempo of the negatives and the positives. So we're gonna strip it by a plate and then perform five second negatives, three second positives. Usually the positives will fail because that's the weaker portion, they'll fail before the negative. So in that sense you would then get your training partner, your spotter, to lift it up for you and then do five seconds, just finish off with the negatives. So. I only expect to do it around two, two three times. I think I've done it three times last week. Um, so what, but what I mean by that is three seconds up, five seconds down, only being able to do that two or three times. If that's not the case and you're able to do more than that, you probably haven't given everything to that first part of the set, i.e. The, the working load. So just keep that in mind. Do uh, exercise number four, we're doing incline fly, dumbbell fly. Um, I would recommend obviously doing a, a warm up set because we've done three pressing movements. So because it's a fly movement, you, you ideally want to do a, a warm up set just to get in the groove because obviously a fly is a different motion, different stress in the shoulder. But I'm actually a stronger flyer than I am presser, so I'm happy just jumping into to this weight and just getting on with the working set. So. Uh, one working set. We've got 42s last week for 13, so we're going to bump it up to 45s, see what we can get there. 8 to 12 reps. And then uh, the second set, we're going to back off a wee bit and change the tempo about a wee bit as well. So um, I'll explain that when we get to the back off set. Oh! 
for the, the back offset, we're going to change the tempo. So three seconds down, two seconds in the stretch position, one second up, two seconds in the contracted position. Um, I'll say this restricts the weight by quite a bit, so we're going to drop it to 32, which is almost a 15 kilo drop. Um, we're just trying to tax, prolong the set as much as possible, just emphasize the two hardest parts of the rep. Um, so we're getting, we're attacking the kind of muscle from all different angles, if you want to say it that way. Just really trying to tax it in every way we can. Tax the positives, tax the negatives, and tax the statics. Uh, so it's the fourth exercise, so I'm pretty spent, so we're trying to eke out as much progress in each portion as we possibly can. Really just drain the chest as much as, much as it's worth. So. sets, um, 12 to 15 reps, with 45 second rest in between sets, so we're not trying to move mountains of weight here, because we've already done that. Um, like I said, they, we've broken down the, the chest sufficiently, I'd say. So what we're going to try and do is just get as much blood into the chest as we can, finish off driving as much blood as we can, um, which ultimately is going to help with recovery and, and all that fun stuff. So, uh, yeah. Nice and simple to end off the test. Uh, yeah. What was that? There must be more to say. <laughs> Correction, four sets. Do as chest on, it's five exercises. Uh, we'll move on to our one side delt movement. So that's been used. So I usually use that rack uh, to do line cuff raises. What we'll do is this week we'll do the panata side raise. Uh, I'm not too overly OCD about what I do for side delts um, because I feel everything almost works for me. So there's no movement I really don't like. Um, Plus that panata is actually really nice and smooth, so um, jump on that. 
We're going to just jump straight into this because we don't need to worry about warming up at this point. So uh, we'll do one working set to all out failure. So that includes failing in the concentric, so failing the ability to actually move the weight up, full range, and then we're going to work the partial range for the second set. Um, I'll get back to you on that one. So for the back off set, strip the weight a wee bit. So we're on 75 there, so probably pull down to 60. And then drop it by 30%, do five second negatives, three second positives, and it's all we can move positives. chest with three sets of calves as well so uh, in terms of calf training doing that twice a week but the like, calf training for me is a bit of a joke to be honest it's there uh, I get good response off most things luckily um, I know a lot of guys suffer from not being able to grow their calves but I'm, trying, I'm swear I'm not trying to rub it in but um, yeah I don't do a lot for calves so finish off a wee bit of that we bit of abs and that'll be the day done, so. So that wraps up the, the chest and a little bit of delt session at 14 weeks and four days out. Uh, as you can see there, there was one or two things that kind of suffered is the wrong word, but um, kind of lost. Didn't get an increase in the incline bench. Uh, but like I said during that, that session there, there's other ways of making up for not um, progressing weight and progressing reps. So, you know, improve stabilization, tempo, progression, um, simple things like that are progress, is progress within itself and that at the end of the day is what we're kind of striving for. So training is still super efficient, still super progressive and um, 
that's kind of what we're gauging things on just now. We are seeing, Nick and I are seeing some some slight visual change very early on in the prep, which is great. Um, what I said in my vlog that I recorded the other day was at the start of last prep, I lost about a stone in 10 days. Now, that's from, that's an accumulation of all the kind of water that I kind of gained on, uh, on the off-season. The off-season was about a year long, just over a year long. So that's not happened this time because we've gone into the prep in a far leaner state. So we only noticed a one pound drop last week. Uh, but yeah, that aside, it's the training we're kind of just keeping our eyes focused on just now. So um, yeah, really tough for that one. Um, hopefully that's a good insight into kind of the, the volume that I'm using just now. Quite a lot of working sets there. Um, so yeah, I've already seen a progression in my physique in terms of being a little bit rounder, a little bit fuller, just from putting that high volume stuff back in, which Nick and I felt working with Patrick was the biggest thing that I took away from working with Patrick was I've kind of now found a way to develop that rounder, fuller look that I've kind of always been needing. I've always kind of had a big physique, but I didn't have that capped round look to it that um, that, we, that we wanted to kind of take things to an upper level. So hope you enjoyed that guys, and as always, subscribe, like, follow, all that shite. So, cheers again. Thanks.